Linda. I'm a representative of the damsel in defense. I am the safety advocate. And I was here last year, and it was a pleasure to be here then. And I was invited to come back this year because the uh, topic of safety is really an important one. And we actually all need to be reminded of it, if not once a year by me, on a daily basis. I passed out information for you. Please read it before you shred it. <laughs> <laughs> share it with your friends share it with those you love and don't forget that Christmas is coming yeah. mm -hmm. and this is an awesome way yeah. to yeah. give a Christmas gift mm -hmm. it's much more easier than um, a gift card actually because you can order it online and you're giving the gift of life possibly to somebody right. so I can't think of a better cause right everybody agree Yay! Yay! Okay. anyway um, by the way Denise was here last year and she was so impressed with the presentation that she is now a damsel rep. She's my sidekick, and I'm so grateful that she's on my team. We, I want to, well, actually, I hosted her first launch party, and it was like, oh my God, this one is real. It was good. She had a lot of great people, and she did really well. I was really kind of impressed. She, she got it right away. You did. Yeah. God bless you. I'm proud of you. Back in our day, anybody over like 60 years old? <laughs> 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 70? Yeah. 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 I'm over 70, yeah. so I can talk about this stuff. <laughs> Back in our day, okay, we had Helm's bread truck. Everybody remember that? Yes. Yeah. Oh, God, I miss him. Uh, we had Avon calling Ding Dong. We had the Good Humor Man. My God, my kids would run out like crazy people to get the Good Humor Bar. We had Kirby vacuum. Yeah. The good old fashioned metal vacuums that work, right? Um, we had uh, the Botanica. We had people coming out and selling us the Botanica. And Fuller Brush. There was not a time he visited that my mother didn't buy at least a home. Well, these were direct sale people, like we have today. And they were actually part of our world. They were part of our community. They would come up to the door, and we didn't hear our door locked. We just didn't get on anyone calling, don't try in. You know, and they were part of our community. They were our friends. We trusted them. Is that not true? Yes. yes. What happened? <laughs> the statistics are really scary, and these have increased, but I'm going to maintain these as the base. One out of five women will be assaulted in their lifetime. How many women are in this room? One out of five of us. That is a real deal statistic. And it's real scary to believe that we are that vulnerable in the world, okay? College age women, four times more likely. And the number one crime <coughs> against women is domestic violence, one out of three. Is <coughs> That is a real scary statistic. I have been with Damsel for five years now, coming up to six actually. I was kind of a newbie. It's only eight years old. <laughs> and I've been there for, you know, pretty much the whole time as they were getting everything together. It's the biggest blessing that came into my life. I was a survivor of domestic violence and I carried this big black cloud over my head of shame. Mm -hmm. It was a topic that was not even discussed. Well, <clears throat> damsel in defense freed me of that burden because they taught me that I do not have to be ashamed of myself, that I was actually the victim. Mm -hmm. And if you twist your thinking around, you know, being a victim because these people are predators and being the victim, that is the experience that we have. I, <laughs> I have a really rocky past. Um, I've been date raped and I've been molested. Wow. Had all this stuff not happened to me, I would not feel impassioned like I do a damsel. And people say, oh, I'm so sorry that happened. Well, it wasn't a fun experience, but mm -hmm. it, were the, it was stepping stones to my being able to do this today. And I have the passion, I am impassioned, and I would probably say 80% of women that are damsel reps have had the same experience. We are a sisterhood. Everything that happens to us is a life-changing experience. So we are a very unique group of women, and we want to get this stuff out there so it doesn't happen to you. If it's an assault on the street, you know, an assault in a parking lot, we don't want that to happen to you. 
having it happen is such a life-changing experience and it's so frightening. And we have a tool that hopefully that's not going to happen to you. <laughs> By the way, 60% of home break-ins happen in the daylight hours, okay? Mm -hmm. Everybody's that's afraid true. of the dark. You better be right. afraid of the light, too. Do you have a just-in-case? What if? Got that concept? What if? Just in case. I'm walking down the street and I hear somebody coming up behind me. That is a what if. It's a predator. What's my just in case? A stun gun or a pepper spray. Mm -hmm. I'm hacking, so they will not possibly hurt me. Okay? So think about what if just in case, no matter where you are in your world. Because it is so, so important for you to even think about that concept. Most people think, it's not going to happen to me. You know, and I get a lot of resistance with that. But if you look at the TV, they didn't think it was going to happen to them either. And it, 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 on every day, on every day, there is something going on on the TV, some kind of tragedy that happened to somebody. They are victims, you know. They planned on going home. They never made it. So follow our gut instinct. That is the first line of defense, is this. If you have your cell phone, You've literally cut yourself off from the neck up because you cannot get the signals that are going here to save your life. How can your, your sensibilities possibly register fear when you've got your brain over here and your electronic monster that has cut you off from everything? Just think about that. Hey, you're doing that so well. <laughs> um, these are three dangerous places, parking lots, parking structures, and underground parking and public bathrooms. Anybody ever been in an underground parking? Parking mm -hmm. structure? Scary. Mm -hmm. Super scary. You don't know who's hiding behind a car. You don't know what's going to happen. Public bathrooms. Predators are waiting for children in public bathrooms. So if you have a child, little Johnny is out to dinner with mom and dad, he goes into the bathroom, there might be a predator in a stall waiting for him. We have an alarm that will alert the parrot's help. All he has to do is set it off. And predators don't like noise, so hopefully they'll run away. Because mm. we don't, they don't want attention brought to them for what they're up to. But yeah, public bathrooms, great place for children. It happens to us women too. But molesters are in the bathrooms trying to get to our children. It's a scary, scary thought. Our children are not safe to even go to the bathroom. Think about that, your grandchildren. But lately, you hear, you heard that the woman that got um, beat up in the bathroom uh, in a casino. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you know, for us too, it's, it's dangerous to be in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. I did not hear you. Thank you for putting that in there. Well, who beat her up? Another woman. No, two women. Two women. Two women robbed her, beat her, robbed her, and killed her. Oh, the older woman. Yeah, and her husband was standing right outside the door. Oh. Okay. So now when, if I'm with my son and I go inside the bathroom, I holler at him every now and then and let him know I'm okay while he's out there. Oh, you know, I'm not taking no chances anymore after hearing that. What's your name? I'm Pacheca. But is it happening to anyone? Yeah. So you have to watch when you're going in, you know, behind you, and be careful when people come in after you. Absolutely. Thank you. When did that happen? Um, uh, say about four or five months ago. That was, that was recent. Yeah. yeah, it was more. <laughs> three, I hear that. Three months ago. I not on that. Oh, no. <clears throat> it can happen to anybody, anytime, any place. It doesn't matter if you're a man or a woman. Yeah, the majority of criminals are men. But there are women that are out there doing the same thing. Who would think that us little women that are caretakers and we cook and we change diapers would actually want to do harm to somebody? Yeah. It's unconscionable. That they would do that. They're a poor representation of who we are. And they do it. Anybody recognize one of those? Pick. <laughs> um, they're called smartphone zombies. <laughs> That's pretty much the way they are. They're cut off. <coughs>
you can be driving and look next door and someone's doing this. You know, they're unconscionable. They don't understand that your attention is not where you're supposed to be if you're doing it. It's two plus two, plus two a brainer, is no brainer, right? Not in the world anymore because we're all stuck on that thing. I had an experience in a gas station, and I addressed this last time I was here. I was at this line of pumps, happily pumping my gas. Next bay, there was a guy there, and he was in a pickup truck. He was not pumping gas. He was leaning up, up against his truck with the cell phone, and he was watching it. And the hand in the back of my neck stood up, and this is midday. I mean, it can happen to anybody. And I watched him, and he was watching me, and he was talking on his phone, and I was watching him talk, talk on his phone, and he was watching me, and I was watching him, and we were having this eyeball thing going on. And <clears throat> he never pumped his gas. Mm -hmm. Now, he might have done it before I got there, but it's really doubtful the way he was looking at me. Uh, bear in mind that they can have somebody on the outside sure. of the gas station That's to nice. track you. Well, I watched him, and when he pulled away, he was watching me all the way like that, and I was watching him pull out. When I was done, I got back in my van, and I took off, and I was driving all over the place. Because what they do is they'll have a friend around the corner, mm -hmm. and they will trap you, Yeah, yeah. and then you've got two of them on you. So, mm -hmm. a gas station out in public. It happens in an instant. Watch as this man snatches a purse in a matter of seconds. Police call them sliders for the way these gas station thieves cagily slide between the top of your door, lying in wait for just the right moment to pounce and run off with your valuables. And this morning, police say these types of crimes are on the rise. Watch what happens at this Texas gas station. This car pulls up next to a woman who's pumping gas. She is oblivious to the man next to her. He brazenly slides right into her car, grabbing her purse and running off before she can even blink. She chases after him, but to no avail. From Corbin, Kentucky to Tampa, Florida, these slippery sliders are being caught on camera all across the country. Sometimes the perp is caught red-handed. This man gives chase after witnessing a sliding. But most of the time, the victim has no idea until it's too late. They're not looking for a confrontation. They just want the property because they know it's being left abandoned and you're not paying enough attention. At this Houston gas station, a woman pulls up and walks inside as a man in the next vehicle cases the inside of her car and she returns to the pump. Then the slider strikes. The woman never realizing she's been robbed. It's very scary that someone could just surprise you and just steal all of your belongings. It's yours. Protect it. And the easiest way to protect it is keep it locked up, keep it with you, and don't leave it in the vehicle unoccupied. Again, as that officer just said, lock your doors or keep your purse by your side. Don't put it on the pump. Don't put it on the top of the car. It's just too easy to get ripped off. Gas stations are a good place for them to be watching us. When I'm pumping my gas, I've got my door locked, I've got my keys on me, and I've got a pepper spray in my pocket. So, come on, you know, that's like shooting in the face. But they're looking for us. And you really have to be not vigilant in today's world. You have to be hyper vigilant. Seriously. Pay attention to what's going on around you. Every time, everywhere you are, those footsteps might be dangerous. You know, you're walking across the street, somebody might be looking at you. These are things that you have to be watchful of. And you really need to share this information with your family, your daughters, your granddaughters, your nieces, everybody that you know that's a woman and a man. Because men are not on the outside with this stuff. It can happen to them too. Now, I've done presentations with men and they say, no, it's not going to happen to me. You know, a big six feet, nine, buff guy. Well, what would happen if they we're assaulted with a gun. Yeah. What are you going to do? Well, no, you're not going to do that to me because I'm six feet nine and I weigh 300 pounds. They're equally vulnerable just like we are. Not as much, of course, because they're men, you know. But they have to be made aware of this kind of stuff too because it can happen anywhere. Anywhere, anytime to anybody. At home, I practice this. When somebody comes to my door, I answer if I don't open it. By the way, I have security doors on my front and back door now. It used to be the old wooden swinging door so the kids could run out and run in and out and make mom crazy. 
Um, I have a burglar alarm system on my home, and I have it one on my vehicles. What happened to the days when we left our doors open and the kids came running in and out and drove us crazy? Well, we have all the security now. When somebody comes to my door, I answer it, but I won't open it because they are digging bells looking for nobody for somebody that's not home. Right. They're doing it team tagging because if nobody's answering the door in the front, you're going to have somebody breaking in in the back. So you have to be vigilant. I ask women, do you answer your door? Oh, no, no, no. It's like you have to answer your door. You want to make them know yeah. that you're on the other side of it. So what do I do? When somebody gains my bell, I holler out, how do y'all get it? Letting the person know on the other side that I am not alone, you know? They don't know that honey is my cat sleeping on the couch. <laughs> 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 you know, whatever works. <coughs> you know, put a pair of men's shoes, which I have not done yet, but I'm in process. Put a pair of men's shoes, like size 19, <laughs> on the porch, to let who's ever on the other side know that, you know, there's a man in the house. So it's really super important. <laughs> they are team tagging, so always, always please answer your door. And if you have to holler out, Honey, I'm home, and you're talking to the refrigerator. On the other side of that door, you're, they're going to know that you're not alone. Important, please don't forget that. Answer your door, but don't open it, okay? Um, <clears throat> entering, exiting your vehicle, like in the gas station. You want to look around it, okay? What I do, I'm in a public parking lot, okay? And I have experience in a public parking lot. I'm the poster child in the big grocery store public parking lot last year and I'm coming out of it and this kind of almost not too nice looking man was there and he started following me and he was calling me not nice names and he wanted money well number one you're not going to get any money if you call me not nice names so he was haranguing me and following me and he was about 10 feet behind me and I got really tired of it and it was frightening I will not say it wasn't but I had a pepper spray on me, that's what I do. Why wouldn't I? And I absolutely stopped in my tracks, turned around, and pointed that thing at him, and hollered, stop. And I was looking at him eyeball to eyeball, because they don't want to be recognized. You recognize them, and you go to the police, and oh yeah, he's got a record. So they don't want to be recognized. That one action, I didn't even have to use it. Stop. And he did. Second time, <laughs> poster child, I'm going for my walk. I'm on the next block over from my home. 9, 10 o'clock in the morning probably, and there's nobody on the street because why? Everybody's at work, okay? So here's this sexy senior citizen out on the street by herself. <laughs> and there was a car that turned the corner. And I saw it out of the corner of my eye. And as I was walking, he was following me. And he had his window down about maybe that much so I could see him, but not quite, okay? And he was looking at me like I was something to eat. <laughs> and I was watching him very closely. Again, hair in the back of my neck, neck is standing up. I'm not oblivious to fear. I stopped dead in my tracks and I pointed it at his car and hollered, stop. He took off like a rabbit. It took me 10 seconds to fly home because I didn't run, I flew. <laughs> got in my van and I was literally driving up and down the streets looking for this guy. He was nowhere to be found. Mm -hmm. I was going to be his victim for that day. Mm -hmm. I can't run as fast as I did 40 years ago. Right. And they're looking for whoever they can. <clears throat> he could have had a friend around the corner waiting for me. And then there would have been two of them on me. They could have taken me. You know, God knows what could have happened to me. These are the kinds of things that we have to be vigilant about. If I'm walking on the street and I hear something from behind, oh my God, I will automatically turn around and see who it is. 99% of the time it's a kid on a skateboard. But what if it wasn't? What if it was somebody that jumped out behind the bushes and came up and grabbed me? You know, well, they can try. They can try. I'm gonna fight. I'm gonna fight like a man. I might scream like a woman, but I'm gonna fight like a man. I wanna go home and they don't have a right to stop me from doing that. Your yard, your backyard, oh my God, don't think that you're safe because they break in through the back of the house, okay? So if you happen to be in your backyard, I always have a pepper spray on me. You never know. You know, I'd rather have it and not need it, right? What if 
just in case. Think about that. If somebody calls you and says, may I speak to Mary, and you say, this is Mary, they're taping you. And they're using your voice to be able to commit fraud with credit card companies because a lot of this is voice recognition there. And if you say, this is Mary, well, he's got your voice. And he can apply for something and uh, ver verification of voice. Yes, I'm Mary. You know, and there you go. They're doing all kinds of stuff. I mean, the crime on the internet, what we're going through with that. Yeah. They're invading us. We are not safe in our homes anymore. So be very vigilant. Um, if somebody asks, if somebody calls you, hi, is this Linda? Either I'll go click or I will ask, who is this calling? I will never, never ever get my name out. Because that is, is a better. they are trying to attract you by doing that, so. Don't ever say your name on the telephone, right? Everybody get that? Yeah. Raise your hand, Dave. Yeah. 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 Important yeah. stuff. Yeah, parking lots. <clears throat> I drive. I drive actually two big vans. Okay, they're big. And I will tell you, never park next to a van. I can demonstrate to you how fast I can open up my sliding door. If you're in a parking lot, what you want to do is never park next to a motorhome or van. Have you ever seen a motorhome, a camping van, with the windows open, with the uh, shades pulled, the drapes pulled? No. They're always closed, right? Mm -hmm. So hypothetically, you pull into the parking lot and you park next to a van. You're oblivious, you know, you're doing your thing, and all of a sudden, you hear the sliding door open. They throw you in. You're gone. You're gone. There's nothing <coughs> that anybody can help you to get out of that situation. So do not park next to them. I'll tell you, don't, I don't park next to them and I drive them, you know, because I know what can possibly happen. I know how fast I can get my door open. It's like a split second. Can you imagine you're standing there and locking your door and all of a sudden you have arms around you and you're gone? It can happen in a split second. When I'm in a parking lot, I walk up to my van and I'm conscious of everything around it. I will look under it to make sure there's nobody hiding under it. A while back, and I, I cannot quote how long ago this was happening, these guys were hiding under vehicles, probably at dark, and when the driver was there to open their door, they slipped their ankle. Mm -hmm. They would wound them. Mm -hmm. Imagine that. Mm -hmm. Vigilance when you're getting in your vehicle. Okay, I'm in mine. I'm walking, and I get to my door, and I don't open my door. I walk around it. And I look, because I want to make sure that my zone is safety. It's that easy. Just walk around and see what's on the other side of it. They hide between cars. Do that, please, please. And it takes muscle memory in the brain to do that type of thing, because you're deliberate in back to that safety zone. Your zone is like this big. You know, you don't want anybody to get in that zone. And parking lots, oh my God, with, with Christmas coming, <clears throat> They will park in lots watching. So if you're in a parking lot, scope if anybody's just watching you. It doesn't mean they have to be out. You know, they might be scoping you. You go in the store, you come out with your packages, with your kids, and they jump out of their car. And they assault you or carjack you or, you know, it could happen. I'm talking about really serious stuff and I'm not trying to frighten you. That is not my reason for being here. I'm trying to enlighten you. I'm trying to give you the tools. They could save your life. It's that easy. So it's called being aware. That's what it's all about. Keep your cell phone off your ear. Keep your cell phone away from this. I mean, you see what happens. You know, people are falling off curbs and there are so many accidents because of cell phones. And it's teenagers that are doing it because they're oblivious and they're invincible and they're indestructible. And they're filming themselves like that video show. It's really scary. So when you get in your car, lock the door and get out of the drive, get out of the parking lot, you don't want to stand there or sit there on your cell phone or balancing your checkbook. <laughs> get in, lock the door and get out. If you need to do that, call somebody to let them know you're going to be home. You don't do it in the parking lot. You get out of that parking lot and do it in a place that's safe. It's that simple. Don't get distracted in a parking lot. What would you do if you're in a parking lot and you're busy? Hi, Mary, I'm going over to this store. And you turn around and there's somebody with a gun at the window. 
It can happen. Okay, so be cautious. Walking and running. <laughs> they love us out there walking and running. And the majority of women don't carry anything. I had this one gal, and she knows I do damsel presentations anyway. We were talking about it. She goes up to Palisades, you know, where PD is, all dark and trees, and yeah. She goes up there and she walks the cliff in the dark by herself with her earbuds in. Oh. You know, I'm sorry, but I asked her, do you have your head up your ass? <laughs> Seriously, what are you thinking? Well, you know, I had, she told me she had four experiences. Four. And she had her there, there walking, you know, and she felt threatened. She had her earbuds in. She didn't even hear them. Four times she has escaped danger. And she still doesn't hear anything. She said, well, now, last time I saw her, she said, well, I only wear one earbud now. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that means half your brain is disconnected. <laughs> you know, I, you can't fix stupidity. That's the bottom line. You can't fix stupidity. I'm trying to fix the smart people who give you some knowledge because we have to look out for each other, correct? We're all in this together. We're sisters. We're brothers. So we have to really, really practice safety in numbers as well. Yeah, we all have to go out by ourselves. Try not to. I do not like going out by myself, day or night. But I do. I come here. I do these presentations. But let me tell you, stun gun and pepper spray are on me. Okay. I I want to go home. It's that easy. Anybody carry a purse? Everybody mm -hmm. carry one that's across your body. Because if you have one on your shoulder or you're carrying it in your hand, anybody can come up and grab it and it's going to be gone. So always carry one that's across your body. Not to say that they can't do it and get it. They might have a knife on them or something to cut it off, but at least you're going to be less apt to have your first one. It's that easy. Shopping carts and women, oh my God. <laughs> women are shopping and they've got their purse right there sitting open while they're up here in their groceries. Um, excuse me, ma'am. And she turns around and looks at me. Are you aware that I could steal your wallet or actually your whole purse? Oh, well, you know, my kids tell me not to do that, but you know, it's a hard habit to break. I hand her my business card. You know, but again, you can't get stupid. Yeah. They're going to do what they're going to do. You can't do anything about it, but I'm out there trying to plant seeds. You know, that's all I can do. So not only you, but everybody you love, think about how you can keep them safe. Think about how you can protect them. Think about how you can empower them with the information that I'm giving you. You know, you can take as much paperwork as you want to take it home. Again, read it before you shred it. You know, I don't do all this just for fun. I really want you to hang on to it and share it. And the, the back page is all kinds of safety tips that I'm talking about here. You know, so stick it on your refrigerator. When you're going out, read it, refresh your memory. Because everybody thinks, you know, you hear this presentation and you go home thinking, wow, this is really cool. I'm gonna be more vigilant. And then it fades away a little bit, you know, to the point of it won't happen to me. The what if just in case that one talked about. I don't need that. You know, I'm not gonna be a victim. Well, better to have it not need it then need it and not have it, right? Everybody raise your hand and agree with that. Please, yeah. be vigilant and have something on you. You don't have to use it. If I'm in a parking lot and I feel like something weird's going on, I have my pepper spray on my stun gun on me. Well, I have a pepper spray too. Pick a hand. And what I'll do, I have my, my stun gun on me. And if I see somebody that is looking kind of weird at me, I walk across and I start setting it off. I start to set it off. And what I'm telling them is the message, it's not me today. <laughs> somebody else. You're, not, you're not hurting me today. They know the sound. You know, so I just walk along and I'm setting it up. And it's like, boy, do I feel good. You know? Because seriously, I'm empowered. You don't have to use it. You just have to have it. It's a great warning system. You know, stop with the pepper spray. These are just warning systems. Vigilance, would you rather have it and not need it or need it and not have it? It's important stuff. 
we came out with these. There's a bigger version, but these are our latest and greatest. They're really cute. They're little. Here they are. These are my demos. The other ones were considerably bigger, but these are really cute. These are called the Kubaton. They are a martial arts tool. You put them on your keyring ring, and you make a stabbing motion with them. If you had to fend somebody off, you're going to carry much more of a punch with this than you are with this. Okay, so it's a Kubaton. It is a martial arts tool. You can kill somebody with this if you poke them in the eye, defending yourself, and that's okay. <laughs> because better you. Better them than you. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Come up here and help me, would you? <laughs> <laughs> um, this, and one of these wonderful ladies has one of these, and I forgot how long ago we actually had them out. As well as these little things, these are croutons. Well, this also. This is a pen, it's called To Whom It May Concern, but here's the pen part, but it's a Kubaton. It is a martial arts tool. You can hit with this, and it has a flashlight. If I took the paper, I didn't get the paper out of It has a flashlight. Oh, doggone it. You want to show yours? <laughs> My flashlight's out too. <laughs> There's a little piece of paper in here, there it is, that, um, Stops the batteries from going down. Mm. Anyway, this is a pen. It's got a little flashlight. Everybody see the flashlight? And it's got a little blinker. So if you're at your door and you're trying to find your keys, and you know, you can actually turn this on. What's really cool about this, and I'm going to pass this around. It's really rough on the top. This is a DNA collector. So should somebody jump you if you can scratch them with this? You take this, give it to the cops. They have their DNA. And hopefully they will run it through the system and find out that this guy is a repeat criminal. And you helped catch him just by having this. Because this is a pen, you can take it on an airplane. You can take it wherever you want to go. They would have to prove that this is a martial arts tool, OK? But seriously, it is. So I'm going to pass this around. Here's a little button for the flashlight. So you can play with that while I continue talking and showing you. And they come with three beautiful colors, of course. Those are girls, and we like color. So that's the two that may concern. Uh, Pearl of Wisdom. This is really a beautiful piece of jewelry. It's a whistle, 120 decibel whistle. So you have it around your neck, and you're looking all pretty. But your safety is right there in the form of a whistle. And it doesn't look like a whistle, right? piece of jewelry. That one too, it's called Leave Me Alone. I don't know where they come up with these names, but I don't question it. Anyway, that's a Leave Me Alone. Same thing as a whistle. This is a breakaway, okay, if you have something hanging on it. Anyway, it's a breakaway lanyard. You can put a pepper spray on it and you can hook it onto your purse. If you need it immediately, you yank on it and it's in your hand. Okay, so it's a breakaway lanyard. Very, very simple technology. Gotcha. This is a stun gun. It is really a cool thing. It looks like a camera, but it has an alarm on it, and it also is a stun gun. I will set it off for you. And you have to know that this is great for women that are doing online dating with strangers. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to go out with Joe and, you know, we're going to go up to the mountains. Um, <laughs> it's a good warning system. Okay. You have it on and you have it next to you. So the guy is getting kind of creepy with you. At least you've got it. You've got protection, right? Turn, hit the alarm. If that doesn't scare him away, then you hit him with the stun gun. You know, protect yourself. I won't. That's my, my favorite. Face. I have mine in my purse at all times. That's the girl. <laughs> and it looks like a camera because I'm going to get out of my car with that. Absolutely. Denise is the testimonial of <laughs> protection. I love it. This is a disabled pen. I have a question. Uh huh. For the stun gun, do you have to have a permit? Nope. Okay. Really? And is, which one is better, the, the spray or the stun gun? Both. Oh, okay. I don't want to do the most damage. I'll put it that way. <laughs> Both. Mm -hmm. It depends upon the situation, what you want to carry. You know, if I'm out and about and it's a windy day, I'm not going to use a pepper spray because I'll put myself on the ground. <laughs> 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 
I do. I know. Two plus two. What you're going to do. Anyway, um, this is on. Okay, you see the red light. Alarm. You know, it's going to get somebody's attention. And then, after the alarm, that's good to me. So, if somebody, this is a personal assault. If somebody grabbed you, you want to hit them with this, okay? Wouldn't you love to hit a criminal and put them on the ground? Yes. If they took this from you, when this is unhooked, you're safe. It can't be used against you. So, this is built in safety for you, okay? This has a little gauge on it so you can see how much power is in it. This has a battery pack in it. Should your cell phone be losing a little bit of power, you can put your cell phone thing in here and goose it up a little bit. Okay, so we're trying to think of everything. These are great for realtors. How many times, you don't know the crime that goes on with realtors, really? they kind of mm -hmm. it down. Yeah. A realtor, they're in an open house. They're closing up and some creek has snuck, yeah, some creek has snuck in and he's hiding in the closet. This looks like a camera. You know, the realtor could be literally walking through this thing, and if somebody jumps out, guess what? First, the alarm, because it'll scare them away if they have a brain. And secondly, you hit them with the stun gun, and what it does, it temporarily paralyzes the muscle, and it will go through clothing. You know, not a big bare skin thing, but it will go through clothing. Go through clothing. And if they take you down with them on the ground, this does not get into your body, it stays in there. Okay, so again, once this is dislodged, can't be used against you. So it's built in safety for you. Is Go ahead. It, is the battery rechargeable? Actually, these, I'm glad you asked that. That was my next statement. These are electric. You plug it in. Oh, Eight sure. hours every 30 days. Oh. You can do it electric, USB, or car. Wow. Wherever you happen to be, you can charge this thing up. So. It's a really good tool, seriously. So if you're like Denise, the safety gal, this is a good thing to have. It really is. This could save your life, just as a warning, like I do in the parking lot, setting it off, saying it's going to be me today. You know, you really have to put that thought in your mind and really become vigilant. Tip off door alarm, which I only have the old version because I'm a putz, but the new version it also has a suction cup. What this does is. You put it in front of your door, you turn it on, and it has a setting. And if somebody tries to get in your door, that gray thing depresses, and this thing howls, it'll wake up the dead. Because it has a suction cup on the window there, it has a suction cup on the bottom of it. I have to put batteries in it. Um, you can put it on the window and push the lever down, and now it's stuck on the window. So if somebody tries to get in your window, 3 o'clock in the morning, would you rather be woken up by this or with somebody on your body? I think I'd rather be woken up by that. How does it work on your window? It has a suction cup. Yeah, but what, what, is that, is that a volume? Is that as loud as it is? Yeah, that's, that's the volume, yeah. So it'll work, you know, college students, little kids, eight-year-olds, you know, you have to teach them that it is a tool, a safety tool that they don't move around with it with their friends. <laughs> I'm going to scare that one, come up behind them. You know, just, kids will do that stuff next. These are a different kind of alarm. Um, these were the actual first types of alarms. Since they came out with that one, that one's my new favorite. You can order those through the catalog, but I don't carry them. I want the new one, okay? I think that's more empowered. Those are, I think they need to reinvent those if they're going to. I like that one better. I think it's better. Anyway, that's my own personal input. Huh? These are good for the children. Oh yeah, they are. They're good for yeah, kids. Yes, they yeah. are. They are. They're good How for does kids. it work? Um, you just press the little button and it has a little alarm on it. About oh. as loud as the gotcha has. Oh. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it has a little slider hoodie. It has a flashlight and then the alarm. And a flashlight and alarm. Yeah, so yeah, you're right. Mm -hmm. For kids, the break. Anyway, next. Oh. Uh, my favorite road trip. What time is it? Two eighteen. Yeah. <coughs> I still have some time. <coughs> yeah. Road trip. Anybody have a car? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any of you have a safety tool in it? Yes. I love you. Have two. This is called a. You have two. 
good for you. I love to hear that. This is a road trip. It is a flashlight, high beam, low beam, strobe. It has a beacon. This is a seat belt cutter. Should you be in an emergency, like in a flood, and you have to get out of your car, you can cut your seat belt, get you and your family out, okay? This is a glass punch. You put this on the glass and push. You don't slam it on the glass. You put, put it on the glass and push. It has something that comes out and bam, shatters your glass. Okay? What's really cool about this, we hear all the time about along the freeway somebody's changing a tire and they get clipped and they're killed. You know, If they had this, all they would have to do is, what the heck am I doing here? Oh. And screwed it, that's what I did. If they put this on the outside of their car door because this is magnetized, or put it on their roof, somebody can be able to see them, right? Mm -hmm. At least there, there's a warning that somebody is there. This is also good for weekend warriors that like to go out camping and get lost in the woods. We hear that too, you know? They went up to there and they've been gone for four days. Well, you know, this will work because it has noise, it has a flashlight, it's a really great safety tool. I never leave home without one. My whole family has one because this is what I do. Okay? My whole family has one. And it's so important, I feel so safe for them because I know that they have a way of taking care of themselves as well as protecting themselves with all this other stuff that we have. So, we can go next. Okay, these storage containers, that's what this is. Um, storage container, okay, you put your money in there, put your jewelry in there. That's the big one. And then we came out with this little one. Yeah, it's great if you're going to go to the gym or, you know, it's a smaller version. Go to the beach, you can put your stuff in it. If you happen to take these on a trip and you put all your goods in them, if somebody breaks into the into your room, they're really not going to be looking at these, you know, because it looks like hairspray. How many people would really consider that this is not really hairspray? I got to tell you, I have a, I have a little safe, and um, one of my former customers was broken into, and she has a little safe. And whoever the criminal was, he took her little safe out of the bedroom and broke it open with a crowbar. Took all of her money, took all of her heirloom jewelry from her mom. She was heartbroken, of course. Well, I got, I got to thinking, you know, I have a little safe, and it has my parents' heirloom jewelry as well as my money in it, and anybody could break into my house. <coughs> it also. I put my stuff in those. I have one sitting on my desk. I have one sitting on my bathroom counter. I have the rest of them under the counter. If a criminal is going to get in your bathroom, they're not going to be going through your deodorant <laughs> and that kind of stuff. They just are not going to do it. They're looking for easy things, okay? What people think is, if uh, the flush box, if I put it in a baggie and put it inside the flush box, they're not going to know it's there. If I put it in a baggie and I tape it behind the flush box, they're not going to know it's there. Where do you think they go if they're going in a bathroom? <laughs> That's where they're going, because they know that people think that all these oblivious places that we think they don't know about, they wrote the book, and we're trying to keep ahead of them and tell you, <coughs> don't put your money there, you know, because they're going to get it from you. But again, they won't go into your cabinet and look for your deodorant and your tab packs and, you know, whatever else you got. They don't, they don't have time to do that. Easy fence. That's what they're looking for. This is really cool. This is our latest stun gun and where did I put it? I put it right here. We love this thing. I'll pass this around. Five beautiful colors because we love colors. Disable pin. Okay, plug it in. I just got these in my stock about a month ago. I'm so happy with these things. I jump up and down when I get to show it. Disable pin. Okay, slide up. Flashlight. Okay. Red. A little red. Now, it sounds different than the other one because they're different configuration, but, you know, if you're walking across the parking lot and you have this in your hand, and it's small, you can put it on your key ring, you know? You see somebody that's looking at you, kind of stupid and threatening, set it off. 
And you think they're really going to want to hurt you because they know that you're armed. And as far as coyotes, absolutely. Good morning, sister. For two-legged or four-legged animals. <laughs> okay, so this is the slide. All you have to do is not touch the top, okay? And people think, oh, I'll shoot myself with it. Come on, you know? We're talking about smart people, so slide it up. And this is the magic button. Don't try it. I'm going to turn this off. Just don't touch the top. Okay, now quite we're taking from you. And you don't feel any rever reverberation no, in your hand. No vibration. Yeah, isn't that cool? Nice. You can stick it in your pocket. Anybody else? Yes. Mothers. The gotcha stun. Can you travel with that as well? Like you do with a pen? I would be cautious with an airport. Oh, yeah. I would keep the disabled pin separate because it looks like a camera. I know people have told me they have gone on an airplane trip and they have gotten it in through their suitcase. You know, not on the airplane, but they have gotten it through. Just put the, put the disabled pin in a different place. You don't want them to know that it actually is stuck on. But some of my customers have actually traveled with it. So all I can do is share with you the input I get. Okay, so somebody actually took it overseas and got away with it because they were on an overseas trip. Well, this is another one. It looks like an hourglass, and they come in five beautiful colors. Same thing. Uh, one click up, flashlight, next click up. Here's the button. This looks like an hourglass. Again, five beautiful colors. Uh, you want to try it? I'm going to turn it off. Just don't touch the top of it. The pen actually works. You can actually write with it. Yeah, absolutely. Is there any liability about with using the stun gun? back and say, well, I was just approaching you and you sort of landed. Could they come back and sue you? Do you know anything about the laws that were about this? Okay, number one, it is legal to carry. It is legal to carry. If you have to use it to defend yourself, you call the police and tell them what happened. You want it reported, okay? If there were a problem with some kind of lawsuit, Damsel in Defense has a million dollar policy. A million dollar liability policy. How close do you have to be up on the person to use the stun gun? Personal assault if they grab you. It's not a taser. Everybody confuses them with tasers. Tasers are what the cops have and you have to be licensed. You have a taser like a gun. They shoot the charge out. Okay? Their tasers also are stun guns, which is really cool. I go meet with cops occasionally. I learn so much from the cops. I really do. It's fun. Um, I show my stun guns and they won't show me their gun. <laughs> I don't know why. Come on, I showed you. We're doing show stuff. But um, you have to be cautious, but if you have a situation where you're literally using it, call the police and report to them what happened. You want them to know about it. Same with the pepper spray. I hit this creep in the face with the pepper spray. He's on the ground. You know, he can't get up. His eyes are watering. It's going to stop somebody on drugs. You know, it's really important stuff. So just report it to the police. And again, we have a policy, million dollar policy. So we're trying to cover all these. These are really good. You just, you just came out with these. Um, the other world we have. Had a pepper spray in it, but we came out with these. These are really cool because these can hold the pepper spray or a stun gun. Okay. I will show, show you how this fits, and I think these are just really cool things. This is new. Yeah. I have a left left one and a right one. I'm trying. To, I'm left handed, so I have to figure out what I'm doing here. Okay, there. So that's the thumb opening, the other one's the other one. Oh, fingers. Oh, 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 
protected pepper. Our pepper spray is today. And a disabled pen, just like the stun guns, a disabled pen. The sideways is off, forward is on, very simple technology. You point and shoot, it's that easy. You make sure you're upwind. Yeah. When I first joined Amazon, I was so happy to get my box and I had a pepper spray. Well, you know, the Daily Breeze, I've heard about that. Well, I live in eastern Manhattan Beach and the Daily Breeze comes up about three o'clock in the afternoon. So I got my first pepper spray and I was so excited. It was really cool. Daily Breeze, I wasn't paying attention to it because I was just so happy because I'm a damsel gal now. And I took it outside and I set it off and the breeze came back. And I put myself on the ground pretty much. It worked. <laughs> it worked. It really worked. At the time, I had contact lenses in my eyes, and I could not get to the bathroom fast enough because I didn't know if this was going to seal up on my eyelids. It worked. Yeah, it worked. And it was just because the breeze came up, and Linda was so excited. <laughs> yeah, it'll work. Anyway, these have a disabled pin like a stun gun. So if somebody took this away from you, again, it can't be used against you. And they come in many beautiful colors. We're trying to make you safe and drink at the same time. Those are just brand new and this, oh my God. Excuse me, uh -huh. I have a, a quick question because uh -huh. I heard you say it several times but it didn't quite get to me. It's okay. The scrap that's on there, if, they, if they, you have it on your arm and they pull the, the stun gun or whatever out of your hand, they can't use it against you? No, they can't. And that's why? It's dead. You oh, you yeah. disable it's it when you pull that. Distract. Yeah, the pin is called disable. Oh. For the fact, if they take it from you, it's unhooked, it's dead. We want to keep you safe. Okay. Yeah. So, okay. any other questions up until this point? No, I'm covering everything? Come on. <laughs> the new one, it's on the book. I'd like to share. Uh, I was a, I'm a nurse, oh, and I know one that was a community person. So we had this probably 25 years ago. And I still have my stun gun from that one. I'll be upgrading since I see this one. But I have used it one time. And what it does, it, it, it disables them. They're down, and it's enough time for you to get away. Good. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Thank you for sharing that. Better to have it not need it, right? Spray and get away, stun and run. Okay, you don't want to hang around and take a selfie. You want to get out of the place. Like, oh, I put them down here and take a selfie. <laughs> no, you really don't want to do that. Okay, dig this. Dig this. This is brand new. And I do have flyers, and it's actually on the handout that I gave you. We have, have developed an app. It's called the Damsel Shield Technology. You can download it on your cell phone. This is an emergency tool where you can enter five names of people you want to contact should you be in a frightening situation. Mm -hmm. Okay, what you want to do is keep the app open because you don't want to have to keep one of it trying to get it to work. Um, if you're in danger, and you hit the button, it contacts everybody on your emergency list. Mm -hmm. Help, I'm in danger. Now, you know, if it's for a college student, it's perfect because they're on campus and help, I'm in danger. And it also has another message that says, I'm okay. How do I know this works? Mm -hmm. Because I set mine up, and I hit the button two times, and everybody on my list was contacted. And everybody was calling me on my landline. I wonder what was wrong with Linda. I have an emergency. You know, they didn't know what was going on with me. I have to tell you, it works. So it's free. It's an app. Download it on your cell phone. It is called Shield Technology Damsel. Okay, you can Google it and find it. Okay, the really cool part. These pepper sprays. Okay, they have a little bit different configuration. There's this little additional button down here. I'll pass this around. Don't push the button. I'll pass this around. If you're in a dangerous situation, well, number one, this links, back me up, this links to this app. There's instructions on how to link this to the app. So, should you be in a situation 
and all you have to do is depress this. It hits this little button. It sends off the message to the app to who's on your list. I'm in danger. It also has a GPS tracker. Ooh. Oh, so, that's good. You don't have to pay a monthly fee for this. Oh. You pay for this. They're 89 bucks, and you've got the app and you've got this. If you were a college girl, you know, anybody, you're in the store, your husband expects you home, he knows you're at the store, and you hit this button, I need help. This thing tracks you because it has GPS. So just think about the safety value of this little thing, how much it could save your life. We love this, we love this. And it has the same again as well. So, really cool pepper spray. This could save your life. So, if, if somebody got that message, like your husband at home, he should just call 911, right? Yeah. Yeah. And, and if you've got it on your hand, on your person, the GPS is going to track where you are. So whoever you contact on that list, they can get a hold of the police and say, my wife is in danger. I'm tracking her. You know. And it has a disabled pin. So your husband can't track you. Huh? You, but your husband can't track you. How long do you? As long as you have this on you, you're going to be tracked. But by the, uh, how does that work? How do they track you? Tracks you. It, this connects with the app. Oh, with the app. Yeah. It oh, the app itself. Yeah, the app, it connects to the app, everybody that you list on the app. That's your emergency list. So and then the police would have to have your phone to track. Well, hopefully whoever's on your list has a phone to track. Yeah, but what are they going to do? They're going to call the police because they're tracking where you are yeah. through this technology. They can, they can speak on the phone and say she's at such and such an address. Well, yeah, they can call, it, call the cops. And you've got the tracking. Cops can track it. But yeah. the cops have to. They'll call the cops. <laughs> yeah, they have to call the cops, but you've got a GPS tracker on you. No, this is for you. So your emergency contact and call the cops and let them know my wife was at the grocery store and she oh, hit that, the that's pepper what, spray. That's what I want to know. You can tell the cops where she is. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you just call them on, on your phone. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, I'm just trying to figure out how how do oh, they gonna yeah. know how to make the Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. yeah, if you're using this, it contacts the people that are on your emergency list. Okay. So you can use It automatically goes to this app and it starts tracking you. And again, this has a disable pin. It still tracks you. So if somebody tries to take this away from you and you still have this on you, you're being tracked by GPS. Does it show a map? I don't know. I don't think it shows a map. This but is what I'm saying. Like I would think that, that if there is some kind of technology, I'm still learning about this. Yeah. Um, I would think that it would show something, an well, address, because it's tracking it. You yeah. know, it's tracking it. Yeah, because it's like if you have mm -hmm. your cell phone and right. you you know, you go to maps and, and you can see where you are. You see a little exactly. green thing satellite. showing where you yeah. are. Exactly. And so if you move, it moves with you. Yeah. So it's it's something. Yeah. It's even like, like a satellite. Thank phone. you. But see, that, that's why I'm saying the cop doesn't have my iPhone showing that map. No, no whoever no. your emergency contact is yeah. has it. Your emergency It's like your call. Yeah. Yeah. But they can figure out. Yeah. They my can. Uh, figure out where you are some kind of way. <laughs> One way or the other, we want you to go home, and if you can hit that button, all you have to do is depress it in defense of, because pepper spray, by the time you depress that little button, it goes automatically to the app. It contacts all the people on the app that you're in emergency. Then it tracks where you are to GPS. So in theory, you, come, you notify your husband, you get this, there's GPS going on, they can see where you are, they call the police, say this is where she is, because it has a tracker. I would like to test it out, but I really don't want to test it out. <laughs> but it, you know, it's seriously, it's really good technology. Have you gotten into that one yet? That's it. Okay, yeah, it's really good. Cool. Cool. But I, I have the app, I downloaded the app, and setting it up, I have five emergency contacts and it took the message out to them, help, Linda's in trouble. I had all five of them call me on my landline. 
what is going on with you? You know, and it was just, I was testing, you know, I was playing with it. <laughs> so be careful if you're playing with it because you don't want to contact all your contacts. I would think it would be a good idea to have, like, cars and police station be willing to contact. You yeah, know, that might too. be a good idea. Yeah. That might that be a good idea. Because they, they usually have a regular police number besides 911. So right. they have a regular police number. Yeah, the number to the office. Yeah. yeah. You know, unfortunately, you wind up being put on hold. Mm -hmm. So, you know, once they get to you on the rotary, okay, it's got a GPS. You know, hopefully they'll be able to see that. But yeah, that's a good idea. I thought about that too. Put the cop number on it. You know, if you got somebody in direct line to a cop that actually picks up a telephone, that's even better. Any more questions? Do you have to kind of understand what it is? Uh, mm. I have the app on my phone. And it's going to call my husband. And he's going to see a map when it call? No. If no. your pepper spray is hooked up to the GPS, to this app, yes. It's Where going to contact him. You need 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 to the app. Oh, no. We don't need a phone. Well, so he should have the app, too. So if you don't okay. try that, put it up. Yeah. No, I'm glad you're asking these questions. But yeah, he should have the app, too. All, all these people have to have yeah, the app also. you put on there. Yeah, they need yeah, the yeah, app also. Absolutely, that's how they connect with you. Oh, that's the only way they can connect with you. That's right. Okay, so I put it on my phone and then I have to call all these people put it on their phone. Mm -hmm. Okay. And you list emergency contacts and by them having it on their phone, they can also use just the app. They don't have to buy the pepper spray to hook it up. Yeah. To be linked with GPS. Kind of confusing trying to you know trying to explain it. It can be a little bit confusing, but yeah, it's really cool. But I just have the app right now and it works. <laughs> All five of the people called me up saying, "What's going on?" And it was a serious message. Help! I'm in trouble. You know, and all five of them called me up. They didn't know if I was being attacked in my house or on the street or what. But it works. It works. It's really cool stuff. We also have a program with how am I on time? Okay. Okay. This is called Safe Hearts. This is a program because we're trying to rescue children from the sex trafficking trade. This is going on in every community, every part of the world. This program is amazing because it has a parent guide, number one, and it starts with the parents. You just don't tell the kid a book. It starts with the parents. The parent reads the parent guide because this is a really, really difficult subject to approach a child about, right? Molestation. It's a little bit different than, hey, mommy, where did I come from? Hmm. That's usually the one we choke up on. My kids already knew it, so they didn't even ask me. <laughs> Man, they were smart. But, you know, to bring up this subject to children, and we're talking, we have to instill in them the safety. Young, we have to teach them young because they have that same sensibility, their gut instinct. Parent reads this guide. It helps them understand how to even open the door to talk to the children about this. And it's something that is so incredibly important because um, youngsters are getting stolen off the internet. You know, they're hooking up with these criminals that have these false, um, what are they called, pages. And these kids, eight, nine-year-old, they fall for it, and they go meet these strangers and they're never seen again. So parents are not quite as vigilant about this stuff as they should be, because, oh, it's not going to happen to my child, that big denial statement. Great program. It has storybooks that are situationally written, and the child will be able to read it with the parents, and they're going to learn a lesson such as little girl goes over to her girlfriend's house across the street, big brother is there, okay? And we hear about this on the news. The coach coaches a team at the local grammar school and he starts grooming one of his sports students and he finally approaches the student and says, I have a litter of puppies at my house, would you like to come and see them? 
Well, the kids' instinct is already going to be, no, nah, I don't think so. Well, you know, it'll be cool. It's only going to be five or ten minutes. I just want you to see the puppies. And he starts building that trust with the child. Okay, well, guess what he's up to? He's a predator. He's looking to get that child alone so he can molest him. This is what they're doing. They're setting up these situations. Safe parts is hopefully going to stop that from happening because it's teaching these children the lesson to honor this, to keep their heart safe, and to keep their body safe. Furthermore, once the child is really involved in this program, and this is a family thing, you know, you're not just going to throw it to the child and you deny your cell phone. This is a family, family thing. We're trying to bring the family together. It is so seriously important. And you can start, we, have, we actually came out with a um, little kids book, which is really cool. I just ordered it today, in fact. But it's so important to teach children this stuff. And it has the books, it has a game, it has all kinds of stuff. And it also has its own website, safehearts.com. You can download pictures, it has other information on it. So we are trying to save children's lives. I talk about parents. Um, Mom gets off work. She's got to pick the kids up at the school, whatever. In the grocery store, gets dinner. The kids are, wah, wah, I want to go home. Well, the parent is there with a cart full of kids. Light is waning, OK? Kids are squalling. And she really doesn't have time to pay attention to what's going on around her, right? And criminals are looking for this. So what I suggest to parents is, and you start early with this, it's a simple game. It's called I Spy. I spy a red car. What do you spy? Oh, Daddy, I see yada yada. And you know, kids are tunnel vision. They only think they don't think outside the shopping cart. What you want to do is bring the awareness of what's around them. And playing I Spy is a serious, fun way to do it because it teaches the child to start looking around. Isn't that what we want to do? Is to bring that awareness, open it. That child might ultimately save them. Mommy, I see somebody that's coming at us. Don't you think that would be a good lesson to teach your children? Simple game called I Spy. I can't think of anything more fun, you know? Kids love that. I spy a dog. I spy a bird up in the tree. But if you're, you're teaching your child to look around and expand their world, that could probably get mom's back when she's loading everything up. You think that might be a worth, worthwhile thing to do with your kids? Simple game called I Spy. Also have a safe word for your children. I ask parents, do you have a safe word? Well, no, but I thought about it. Okay, well, we see children getting stolen out of school and off the sidewalks, and the child needs to have a safe word. I don't care if it's macaroni or pizza. The child needs to understand that this is their safe word. They don't tell it to anybody. Only the people that are trusted know it. So if somebody approaches the child, the child asks, what's the safe word? And if they don't know, they run like hell. You know, They're going home. They're going to report it. That's another way to protect your children, a simple safe word. So if you know anybody that has little people, ask them if they have a safe word. Ask them if they play I Spy. Don't you think that would be a cool way to open a kid's awareness of what's going on around them? Because typically they grow up and they're just they're just raised into their world, you know? And when they get into that age of actually opening up their brain to step around them, they're a lot older, you know? But we have to start them little to be able to groom them positively to help them understand safety, so. I wish there was a way you could uh, get them off the phone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. It's called being parent, take it away from him. He didn't pay for it, he's not paying for the service. You can always take it from him. Yeah, but if they follow the rules, they still on that phone. No, you take it. You literally take it. In classrooms, there are so many problems with kids on their phone all the time, mm -hmm. even on jobs with adults. So you need to do come up with a system where you take the phone from them. They have a certain length of time to use it and take it. You are the parent. I'm not a parent, but I'm an aunt of many, 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 many. So I know how to play the game. <laughs> yeah, you take it away. It's that simple. My kids, I'm a grandma, my kids are grown. Um, if my kids were going through this technology at a young age, they wouldn't have this. 
they would not have this. Thank you. I would have a different way of them getting hold of me. There's a different way of communicating besides a cell phone. We used to talk to each other, right? Yeah. We used to go to our friends, they used to go to their friends' houses. It was safe. Now everybody thinks, oh boy, this cell phone is really going to keep everybody safe. It's not. It's helping these kids get picked up by the sex trafficking trade. Okay? We don't want that to happen to our children, so take the damn thing away. Excuse me. They don't need it. They don't need it in the classroom. They don't need it. They should make these kids leave it at the door. But a recent shooting that happened, just recently, when some of the kids were able to contact their parents from school, mm -hmm. very uh, great for the parent and for them too. Right. So we have pluses and minuses regarding right. phone. I agree. Yeah. I agree. There are situations where we really have to have it. Yeah. I'm not discounting that, believe me. Right. But overall, these kids that are, this is what they're doing with their life. You know, that's another issue to talk right. about. So thank you for that. Right. I appreciate that. Yes. So I'm out here talking and talking and talking to people. This is all I do. I talked to somebody this morning, and I'm actually talking to a Boy Scout troop today, which is really, really cool. I go to vendor events. I go to churches. That's all I'm doing is out there talking. I want to empower everybody with this stuff, so I'm asking all of you, who do you know? Do you have a church club where women congregate? Do you have any kind of women's organizations where you congregate? This is a place where I want to be. Because the more I do the outreach, you're actually helping me save lives. That's what you're doing. You join Damsel's mission of hopefully saving people's lives. It's called a network. I would love it if you would consider who you know. And these are all suggestions. I go to business offices. I go to realtor offices. I do lunch and learns. You know, I'll do whatever I need to do to make myself available, even if it's for 20 minutes. You know, I'll, I'll work within the parameters. So any kind of facility, church organizations, women's, as I said, your friends, you have friends, right? Get some women together and have your friends over and have an empower hour. It was fun, right? It was really fun and it was empowering. So do you charge a fee to make this presentation? No. Uh, my time is for the taking. Absolutely. The only time I will charge is if somebody deliberately wants me to come someplace. As a, they'll offer as a chargeable event, and it's like, I don't charge for this. We want to pay you for your time, which is really great. I love it. You know, I'd love to be paid for my time. You know, like 50 bucks an hour all day, it's pretty cool. I can really do that. I get behind that one. But no, I, this is kind of like our service as damsel women. We're out here doing this. You know, we are just out here doing this. Do we make a lot of money doing this? No. My profit comes from the sale of the product. You know, I earn a little commission. That's all it is. You know, you buy something for two bucks or five bucks, my commission is a buck. You know, I'm not getting rich doing this. But if I can save a woman's life, that's my rich. Because that is what's important. So think about who you know, you know? Who's your acquaintances? Who's your mommy group? Um, your male woman, she has friends too. You know, just think about expanding thinking. I do vendor, event, vendor events. I'm doing two of them, one Friday and one Saturday. I go there and set up, and there's all kinds of vendors, especially at Christmas, you know, shopping and everything. It's a really fun thing, great way for me to put damsel in front of people. And post an empower hour in your home. Get some girlfriends together. You earn free and half price product for doing that based on the sales. Denise, oh my God, her first Empower Hour, what did you have, 1400 bucks in sales for that thing? Mm, yeah. For her launch, she sold $1,400. That's how many people she empowered. You know? And her earnings are part of the commission on what was sold. That's how we make our living. So it's really important. I want to get out there and I want to talk to everybody. I want to talk to groups. I want to talk to everybody that you know and love. It's that simple. Get a hold of them. Hey, I'm having an Empower Hour. I want you to see this. It's really cool. It's got really great safety tools. And talk it up because it's fun. 
you know, you have a bottle of wine to kind of get well, what do you do? And you know, puts a little slice of happy and you pass around, you know, I pass around the stun guns and, you know, and the whole thing, you know, my God, they're setting off stun guns and the whistles and all kinds of stuff. And, you know, the ultimate really cool thing in that kind of community, when I start talking about me and the road that I took, ironically, a woman will pipe up and say, you know, that happened to me. I was also a bad wife. You know, these women share these secrets that they have kept like I did. And it is such a blessing because these women become a family. And it's all based on trust of what they want to share. They open themselves up. And also, they don't have to carry that dark burden anymore like me because I believe them of it just by being honest with who I am. So, to date, when this was going on, we have distributed 2.5 million safety tools. We have a long way to go. There's like 25,000 of us, maybe 30,000 reps, clear across the United States. Look at the population in LA alone. We've got a long way to go, and most people have not heard of that zone defense because it's so new. I mean, eight years old, and I've been with them. Actually, I'm going to be with them coming up to six years. Biggest, biggest, biggest <coughs> in my life, and I just want to come out and talk with you ladies and you gentlemen. Think about all the women you love too, including your personal safety. So, my name is Linda. This is Denise. She's my partner, and I'm so grateful that she joined. Us. Should you have any questions about our product or want to talk about hooking something up that we can get this word out there, I would so appreciate it. It would be the biggest Christmas gift you could ever give me by helping me share this journey. You have a catalog that you can go online and look at the product. Well, I passed out in that packet, I passed out an inventory sheet. And you can get that in there. Right oh, here. Oh, okay. Oh, the price is a very Yeah, but you can go on my website. Oh, okay. And you can oh, okay. check it out there. If you have any questions, email me, call me, whatever. Okay. You mentioned a million dollar policy. What the billion is policy. that? Do you, like monthly, do you give money to, is it like an insurance policy? Do you buy one of your products? How yeah. does that work? No. It costs 10 bucks a month for me, for us. For us, it costs 10 bucks a month. $10 a month for that liability policy. And you know, I have not printed it up to really know the full scope of it. I just want you to know that it's an awareness. And should you be in a situation, I contact them and we take it from there. You know, yeah, creeps are gonna say, yeah, she hit me with a pepper spray, but you know something? You tried to hurt me. So you call the police. Stop. Exactly. You know, I'll put you on the ground because you're a dumbass. You know, she left me alone. Okay. Anyway, any more questions? I will wrap it up. There's a sleeve at the bottom here. That sleeve, it looks like a shirt. Yeah, those are shirts. Those are damsel shirts. How does it work? You order them online. I mean, what what's in it that would make it look up? Make it thin for thin the waist of that. Not the shirts, those are just t-shirts of advertising. Oh, okay, I see. It's nothing within. Yeah, all right. Well, yeah, we'd like to have it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the t-shirt is something long. Now, defend yourself. Little rockets. Okay. So, do you have stuff today or do you have stuff today? I do have stuff today. And I do have to price it differently than what's there because I have to pay tax and processing for my stuff that I sell to you guys. So it's a little bit more because I've already absorbed the cost. I buy this stuff and then I, this kind of community, yeah, I'll sell it to you. I'll do a happy dance. How would it? They're good Christmas presents, everybody. You know, you have somebody that's going away to college. Give me pepper spray. Went out and four women. Anyway, I'm wrapping it up. Thank you so much. I so appreciate being here again. And I would love to come next year. Whoever is the organizer then, I hope you will contact me because it's such a pleasure to be here.